This is Jim with A1 Repairs. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. The point of the following video is to provide you an up close view of the products that we sell as if you were heading into our local hometown dealership to purchase one. With everybody shopping online, this is our attempt to bring you closer to the product rather than just viewing words on a web page. Please be sure to email or call with any questions that you may have and also like us on Facebook for the latest product and industry updates. Thanks and enjoy the video. All right, here we have the uh, Husqvarna 580 uh, backpack leaf blower. Uh, this, this is pretty much the Ferrari of all backpack blowers. Uh, there's really not anything on the market that compete with this one. It, uh, we like to call it the bag dog out there. So let me, uh, let me give you some of the incredible stats that this one has uh, before we get going. And uh, I want you to keep my, this is the 580 uh, BTS model that you're looking at here. Uh, same thing is going to go for the 580 BFS model. So just a left or a right hand throttle configuration. We'll cover that at the end of the video. So uh, let, let's get some uh, statistics here for you. Uh, the engine inside of this one is 75.6 uh, cc's and it's cranking out 4.3 horsepower. And uh, the, the actual statistics for the air movement on this one, which keep in mind CFM is one of the most common things you want to look for. We'll cover a little bit more of that uh, later on at the end of the video as well. So uh, this one's putting out 908 cubic feet a minute at the end of the blower tube right here. Okay, Inside of the impeller housing, putting out 1,024 cubic feet a minute. And then the uh, miles per hour for this one is uh, 206 miles per hour. And then always consider weight. The bigger the backpack blowers are, obviously they're going to weigh more. So you want more power, it's going to come with a little bit more weight. Uh, whether you get the left or the right hand throttle configuration, you're typically right around about 26 pounds on this one. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the features that this one has. We're going to start up here with the air filter box on it. Uh, Real nice, they got these quick snap air filter releases. These actually come off of the Husqvarna chainsaws, uh, which is real nice around all, uh, a lot of the consumer and the professional saws. So uh, you take your tool that comes with the blower or a flat screwdriver, your key, you just put it in there, they just pop open real easy. There's four of them on there. And then the filter cover removes right there. Uh, there's a pre-filter on it. This is a dry filter. You don't oil it, but it is cleanable. So uh, regular soap and water. Any type of like degreaser works real well uh, whenever you're going to clean this out. Then there is a pleated air filter. We're going to zoom in here on this a little bit here and see if you can uh, see a lot of the ridges that are right there. And uh, this, is, this is a lot like a car filter. Uh, very, very heavy duty. You see that? Now, when, the, when this gets dirty, you can blow it out a little bit, but I mean, when it starts to get dirty, you just replace this one. There's not a whole lot that, uh, that you do with this one. So, the 580 and uh, some of the incredible power and in CFM that this one really pumps out is uh, kind of in due to what I like to call a mini turbocharger that's uh, sitting on this blower. I'm going to tilt this camera direction here. You'll see these two little snorkels coming out the top right there. And uh, what those are is they're air passage chambers right out of the inside of the impeller. And uh, what happens is the impeller is revving up and it's starting to throw a lot of air out. It shoots air out these little tubes. And uh, what that'll do is it comes right here to the air filter cover and then it forces air induction into the actual air filter itself. So um, kind of almost like a turbocharger. And uh, that's uh, a real nice feature that is only available on the 580, 580 to where you get that feature. Once again, that, uh, that turbocharger is only, or not an actual turbocharger is what I like to call it, but uh, that turbocharge uh, feature is really it's only available on the 580 model. And uh, those snaps that I pop those little uh, pop right back out with the air cover, these hold them extremely tight. If you hear the snaps when you put on it, it's, it's a nice, nice uh, snug fit on there. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the front of the blower here. 
You got a standalone unboltable recoil, real nice for maintenance or if it breaks, uh, you can easily change that out. Uh, the spark plug is well covered with a heavy duty spark plug boot on there. Uh, there's easy starting, there's a purge primer right here underneath the carburetor to purge air bubbles out and then there's a clear yellow fuel line so you can see the air bubbles moving out and then when most of the bubbles you know, disappear then you know the blower is ready to be started. There's the primer right there. Uh, choke is right there, it's an infinite choke so you can leave it in different positions when you go and start it. Uh, large commercial uh, gas tank on it, which is important if you go out, you're doing spring cleaning, run these for you know a couple hours at a crack, you're going to go through some fuel. This is a big engine, it's a high performance engine, you know, so uh, it's important to have a big tank. Uh, uh, the uh, fuel cap is cocked off the side for easy filling, and uh, there's a nice tether on there to hold that on. Tilt this blower to the side right here. Uh, you're going to see there's a heavy rubber, uh, heavy duty rubber isolation mount, which is right there. There's a couple of them positioned throughout the entire blower. And uh, what's nice about that is it reduces all that vibration feeling that you're going to get into your back. Uh, it keeps the engine isolated from the operator platform. And uh, here you go, I'm going to position the blower on the side. You'll, you'll see right here. Of the two pieces flex independent, and uh, that's that's really important. You know, it helps you know keep you from feeling get that real bad fuzzy feeling where something's beating you up. You know, a piece of equipment which uh, you know it's it's nice to see Husqvarna keeps you know you as a user in mind for comfort as well. Uh, you'll also see there's a heavy duty air intake vents right here. Uh, the intake for the impeller is sucked through the side right here. <clears throat> it's also sucked through another port. Uh, another uh, place on the uh, backrest right here which is designed to keep you as the operator cool. Um, I'm going to show you underneath the padded rest right here. You can uh, see there's an air vent which is right there. There's a couple of these positioned up through the back. And you also see on the side right here. Uh, what that does is as it's sucking air, this is real nice on a hot summer day when you're sweating real bad, it actually sucks air right from your back and it cools you and, and you can you can feel it. You know, I mean it, it's it's a real nice feature. So uh, the other thing too is uh, you'll notice this, uh, this is a blow mold frame right here that the engine mounts to. This isn't cheap brittle plastic that if you drop it or something it's going to crack easily. Uh, very heavy duty, it's, it's really designed to take an impact. So uh, just nice quality equipment. The, uh, the strap system on the Husqvarna is a real nice or ergonomic. Instead of them being straight, they wrap and form to your, uh, to your shoulders very well. You'll see there's like a Almost like a ballistic nylon, very comfortable uh, padded backrest there for you. There is uh, on the shoulder straps, there is a clip so you can uh, button them together, hold on to you tight. There is also a hip strap on here if you like that or if you don't. Uh, you can take a whole lot of weight out of your shoulders if you clip that hip strap in and it will uh, you know, it prevents your shoulders from getting real beat up. If you don't like the hip strap, the strap you can pull the buckle all the way up and it easily sneaks through the back right here, clips onto the side and it will be out of your way. So if you don't want to use the uh, hip strap, um, you can just bypass that, just sneak the, uh, sneak the uh, um, the clip and the strap right through the back and then it'll stay out of your way so it's not dangling or anything. Alright, and there you have it. This is the uh, 580 uh, BTS or the BFS backpack uh, leaf blower from uh, Husqvarna. Thanks for uh, watching the video. Alright, this portion of the video is to uh, teach you some general education about uh, backpack blowers, things that you should look for when you're purchasing them, and a lot of the uh, common questions that we get that, that pertain to blowers in general. So let's, uh, let's go over a couple things here that uh, when you're going to purchase a backpack blower, what you should look for and uh, what it means to you in the end. Now, when you go to buy a backpack blower, one of the most common things you want to look for is performance. Well, I want the best backpack blower on the market. And there's two different ways you can measure that. 
Uh, there's miles per hour and there's also what they call CFM or cubic feet a minute. Now miles per hour more pertains to a pressure situation. So uh, to give you an example of pressure where you want higher miles per hour in a backpack blower is uh, say you uh, seal driveway. You did a lot of asphalt sealing and uh, you got uh, the pressure heaves where you start getting cracks inside of the driveway Well, you collect dirt inside of there. That's where you want pressure. Uh, the more miles per hour you can get, you can actually blow the chunks of dirt out of it. Now, that's the only place that you really want to pay a lot of attention to for miles per hour. If you've got a real large pile of leaves, what you want is you want volume. You don't want a little jet just shooting inside of that pile of leaves. You want a giant mass of airflow that comes right at it and hits it. So uh, the second stat you want to look for on a blower is CFM, cubic feet a minute. The more cubic feet a minute that a backpack blower pumps out, the happier you're going to be with it. So if you're going to do any construction type work or you're doing any uh, landscaping work with your backpack blower, CFM is basically the number one stat you want to look for. Uh, there's two different places that you can measure that as well. So pay attention when you know, you're looking at the Husqvarna backpack blowers, you're looking at the competitors. There, you can measure cubic feet a minute at the nozzle tip and you could also measure it inside of the impeller housing right here. So uh, make sure a, a good company will give you both measurements, but if they don't, typically they're going to favor on the side of the higher measurement, so they're going to mark what's inside of the uh, impeller housing right there. So uh, keep that in mind when you're going to purchase a backpack blower. Miles per hour uh, is typically just on at the end of the blower too, so you don't usually find two readings on that. So. Second thing that uh, we get an awful lot of questions about is uh, what do the letters mean on the uh, backpack blower? So this only is going to pertain to the Husqvarna backpack blowers right now. Is uh, the numbers are always be the same, and we're going to use the 580 here as an example. But uh, it's either going to end in BTS or BFS. Uh, sometimes uh, on you know, the Husqvarna website it may only be the 580BT or the 580BF but the actual full, full number is the 580BTS in this one here as an example. The T stands for tube mount throttle. If there's an F in there it's going to stand for frame mount throttle. And a lot of people like to refer this to as a left or right handed blower. Now, one thing I want to point out is whether you're buying a left or a right hand blower, all that has to do with is the throttle control and where the throttle is positioned. The blower tubes are always coming out on your right hand side. So you're not going to find a backpack blower where it's coming out on the right and it's coming out on the left. It's only going to come out on the right hand side for you. Now, the BTS, standing for tube mount throttle, which is what you see right here, has this particular design right here. Too. The uh, uh, throttle actually runs down a cable and it gets mounted. You got your flex elbow which goes right here and then you'll have your joint that hooks in right here and this is a swivel joint and then this handle mounts right to this too. Uh, this is an ergonomic handle as you see right there, it's uh, cocked in a forward position. That is adjustable on there, but uh, what is nice is if you uh, take your hands and just lay them down at the side, naturally your wrist sits a little bit crooked. So when you're operating this blower, uh, you don't actually use it in a straight position. You're going you're gonna to operate the blower like this. And uh, it just naturally fits into your hands very well and it doesn't tweak your wrists. Now, with the, uh, the right hand throttle, you got the cable that's going to run down the tube. You've also got, there's going to be clips that holds the cable in place there for you. But um, uh, with this particular, the uh, right-handed model, there's going to be a squeeze trigger on it right there. What is nice about this is it's more like a gun trigger. You can actually feather the action. And there also is a cruise control on here. There's another knob right there. When you pull that down, you see that sucks the throttle in position and holds it for you. So uh, it gives you, you can use it as a feather-like option or you can also run it on cruise control. The kill switch is on here as well. Hear that right there, that'll kill the blower. 
bring it back to the run position, you're going to take the backpack blower off, put it on the ground, you can fire it back up. So, but uh, this is your uh, this is your right hand throttle uh, or your BTS model, and this by far is probably our number one seller. So uh, you can use this commercial, residential, however you like. Uh, it's nice, it's convenient. You only have one thing to deal with. So let's bring a different one up here. Here is a 570 BFS, which is going to be your left-handed thr throttle design. And uh, once again, like I was telling you before, the uh, blower tube's still coming out your right-hand side right here. Okay, you're going to hook into your flex elbow, you'll have your pivot joint, and then uh, here's the stationary handle. It's still an ergonomic handle, so it fits, fits into your, your wrist nice and natural, and it still is adjustable for you. So, but uh, just one position handle right there. And this is going to be your left-handed throttle design right here. And uh, what's nice about this particular design is it's very impact resistant. Uh, now the BFS models are more favored in the commercial market. And uh, here's the reason why. They're, they're on a spring joint right here. Uh, these are really designed to take an impact. So if you can see right here, I can flex this, move it up and down, bring it in the upright position, you know, say you crash into the blower or something right there. Um, it, it's, it's just really designed for a commercial aspect. And the reason being, a lot of times what we get from uh, customers or commercial cutters is they take their blower and they accidentally leave it in front of the trailer tires or they're leaving it on the in the trailer, in the enclosed trailer, or sitting on the you know open trailer bed. And um, if you have a zero turn roll over these or car tires, if, if you have the right-handed throttle design, not only did you crash into it, wreck your blower tubes, you also ruined your whole throttle mechanism right here. So this gets a little pricey to replace if you have to do that. So that's why the commercial guys tend to favor the uh, left-handed throttle design. You'll also notice that the throttle cable is a lot shorter and you don't have to worry necessarily about catching it on stuff. So uh, this is really what the left-handed throttle design is for. The other thing I want you to uh, pay attention to is the throttle is positioned on the tip right there. Okay. Zoom in there and get a real good picture of it for you. And it's always on continuous. So where I was telling you before on the other one with the gun trigger, you can feather it. This one is going to pretty much stay wherever you have it right there. So if you want to feather the throttle, you got to continually move it back and forth. Or if you just like it on continuous, you can do that as well. I'm going to pivot it to the other side. You'll see there's a, a red switch right here. This is a kill switch, so you can kill it and shut it off. And uh, when you're using this uh, backpack blower, Pick, decide to pick up a commercial one. I'm going to throw this on my back just so you can see how this works. The throttle is going to stay right there. So a lot of times people say, well, how do I get it up and down? It's really easy. It just grabs with your elbow, pulls down right there, lock into place. You can use it. You know, if you want to leave it on floor and on a constant position, you can just kick that right back up with your elbow, put it out of the way, and go ahead and uh, do your job and keep it on floor. Uh, the only downside, one of the reasons uh, that I could give you an example of where you wouldn't like uh, the uh, left or the left-handed throttle configuration, is uh, if you're in tight places, say you're going in between a boat and a house or something, and you're trying to operate, you got you got an item right here. You also got the blower tube, which is on your right-hand side. Sometimes it creates issues where you're trying to turn around inside of a tight confined area. So. That's one of the reasons you may not like the left-handed um, uh, version. But uh, honestly, it's personal preference. You, whatever you're more comfortable with, either the right-handed or the left-handed version, you know, just um, make sure you, know, you pick that and stick with it. Uh, you, you can't go wrong either way. You know, there are half a dozen reasons why one's good or half a dozen reasons why the other one's better. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's in favor either way. So just uh, pick what you're more comfortable with. Uh, the backpack blowers from Husqvarna come with a two-year commercial or residential warranty. Now, uh, Husqvarna does have a promo. You want to extend that out, you know, and it's stuff that you can purchase from us, you know, while you're uh, picking up the backpack blower 
or something's not listed on the website, just call in and place the order with us over the phone. But uh, if you pick up a, a six pack of uh, oil to go with your backpack blower, and they have various different bottle sizes in that, uh, Husqvarna will give you, instead of a two year factory warranty, now this is on the con consumer or the residential side, they will bump you up to a three year warranty. So pretty nice, you know, you pay for a six pack of oil, you're gonna use the oil anyways, you know, and then you can uh, you get an extra warranty for free, which is real nice. If you purchase three of their pre-mixed gas oil fuel cans, you can go all the way out to a four year factory warranty. So, uh, and then uh, this is the super high octane, no ethanol gas uh, from Husqvarna, which is real nice and it's pre-mixed with your uh, oil. So uh, just a couple, uh, you know, or a nice little promotion that Husqvarna is running. So, and once again, don't forget about the kids. Everybody wants to be like mom, dad. Uh, Husqvarna has got a whole line of uh, cool toys that are uh, battery operated, make noises, they move. And the blower, yes, it even blows air and it makes noises as well. So, uh, you know, add one of those to the purchase for next birthday or Christmas or whatever's coming up, whatever special holiday you got. So, uh, thanks for tuning in.